Hello and welcome online viewers, St. Aidan's, and welcome to our real live service today. Today we have a real treat, as Lynn McCarthy will be sharing about Glory Corner here at St. Aidan's. The title of the talk today is No Corner on Glory. Now the Glory Corner has been a real blessing to us staff here at the church as well. And over the time, we've had a chance to see many individuals here, just teamwork, getting together, and uh, helping Lynn out with this, this project. And today Lynn will be sharing a little bit about the vision, the story behind Glory Corner. But before we start, let's pray together. Holy God, we pray your blessing on Lynn as she leads us in worship this day. We ask that you fill her with a sense of peace and confidence that comes from your spirit, so that your truth may be proclaimed faithfully. We pray that everyone listening will recognize your glory in all that Lynn shares. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our opening scripture today comes from Mark chapter 3, starting at verse 26. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Now I'd like to invite Lynn McCarthy up for our New Testament reading from Romans. This is a reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 25. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. The creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gloria is quite pleased to have her own page on the church website, and she asked me to invite you to read all about her. So please look on the home page. There's a lovely photo of her. But may I offer some further details about Glory Corner, ones that aren't on her page. First, we'll take a small trip down the lane. No, not the one between Campbell and Cordova, though we did find most of our freebies there, and we found out how much we love to reuse, but the one called Memory. This was the southeast corner when Pastor Dave and Elaine, Hannah and Matt first came. Nothing special. It could have looked like that forever, like any bit of grass around. But there were changes afoot. In 2016, the Little Free Library appeared, built with used lumber and other materials, and we have J.P. Burak 
the son-in-law of Joy and John Wood to thank for this. In 2017, the community cupboard, inspired by an article in the now defunct Metro News about one set up in Weston, found a place thanks to the ReStore and a $5 used kitchen cupboard. Maggie and Jerry Kramer, the sister and brother-in-law of the late Martha Greenwood, whom some of you might remember, donated the arbor and bench in 2018. Martha had attended St. Aidan's, I think about four years. She was baptized here and she came to love Jesus and to love St. Aidan's. In 2015, she died far too young of cancer. On September 13th, after the 1030 service, we'll have a dedication of the arbor to her memory. Now, interestingly, the first one to try out the bench was a big black lab. The secretary at the time, Janice, glanced out of the office window and there was Doggy, looking quite comfy, as if he owned the place. Others would come later, on two legs, to sit, to rest, to stop for a bit. And we even had an event with a certain couple gracing the arbor. Please note the house across the lane. So that became part of the Southeast Corner Trio, used by neighbors and by you. Books taken and given, food and toiletries placed anonymously and similarly taken, the bench and arbor a resting spot, a place of welcome. But to me, it always seemed a little stark, all those straight edges, useful, practical, certainly a blessing, but stark. The library gradually became very well used, but the grass and soil in front of it died. Weeds sprang up around the church, or maybe we just noticed them, and the crazed lilac sprouted everywhere. It was time for change. So, weeding, pruning, exchanging grass for creeping thyme, that's T-H-Y-M-E, something aromatic underfoot. Thyme takes care of itself. There's no mowing required and it doesn't mind being stepped on. So we planted different kinds. Foxley thyme went in front of the library, then Highland cream, Silver Edge, Elfin, and creeping thymes around it. Eventually, it will cover the area, we hope. But expansionism lurks. Some years ago, I was in New York City and visited the cloisters the medieval section of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It has a monastery herb garden outside. The idea took hold, a sniff and snip herb garden. Digging now had a new purpose. One of our team, Carol, donated bricks for a path. The red bricks came from Young United Church that had been burned down in the 80s. Again, some of you may remember. Jerry, Maggie and I pirated creeping time from Sunnyside Cemetery, and were still standing. Remaining slabs from the prayer garden joined the bricks to make a defining perimeter, a defense against city snowplows in the winter, and this thanks to Jeff. And donations, oh my goodness. Even Mr. Pallister unknowingly contributed herbs with his $200 for seniors a few months ago. The garden lady down Campbell gave lamium for around the cupboard. Someone hauled away old branches and dead stuff from around the now pruned lilac. That was a neighbor of Jeff's. A friend, uh, my friend Ben, made the garden boxes. Chris, that's Chris Chapaya, faithfully waters. Soil came from what was actually good earth under the grass, as well as your donations of black earth. Good garden tools materialized. Rocks from West Hawk Lake came west for the rock garden, thanks to Kathy and Winston. Then more lamium, a bleeding heart bush, hanging baskets, mints, Engelman ivy, rhubarb, violas, Edelweiss lavender. Thank you, Vicki and Carol and Joy and Margaret. And a lot of weeding, always weeding. 
One day the spirit hit. This rapidly changing space was becoming pretty close to glorious. Hmm. Glorious. Glory. Hey, the glory corner. Why not? And not glory for its own sake, but to show God's. Neighbors stopping to use the library or load up the cupboard were curious about the process and the reason, so these gave opportunities for wonderful conversations and lots of advice. Always amazement that it's for the neighborhood. Comments in the journal kept in the brown basket have been sweet to read. Someone even wrote out a recipe for lemon potatoes with basil, and it looks really good. When I tell passers-by the name of the area that it's for God's glory, many nod and agree. So, the glory corner. The rock garden at the north side of the bench. The mints and lavenders around the bench. The thyme and lamium covers the lovely boxes filled with basils and oreganos, sages and savories and lemon balm, the hanging baskets, the vine that will give shade, and even the newly minted back 40, terraced so that the soil doesn't get lost, bugleweed as ground cover, all overseen by the freebie back lane composter. Stay tuned too for a rain barrel, and please Lord, lots of rain. As Paul points out in 1 Corinthians 12, the less presentable parts of the body are hidden, but necessary. It's the same with Glory Corner. But it isn't meant to be just a pretty spot. Lori sees a metaphor in this little corner, a kind of instruction. It points to the Lord when there's opportunity. Just look at the variety of basils alone, each different, and consider his amazing creativity. Most herbs belong to the mint family with its square stems. Even plants have family resemblances. It's an invitation to look further and deeper, think Moses and the burning bush, maybe to think transformation. We heard about our transformation in Pastor Dave's challenging sermon of August 23rd. Glory's transformation came in the digging, the pruning, the tearing up, the clearing out, the slow rebuilding by people called to this work, and provision, plants, tools, labor, ideas, love. Glory even has her own team, or maybe her servants. Carol, Chris, Jeff, Vicki, and me, Lynn, and generous donors, too many to mention, but a lot of you are on Glory's list. Hey, read the homepage. Now isn't this what the Lord does in us? He asks us to change and remove the things that choke off his plans. We resist, we complain, we grumble, but somehow when we finally yield to his way and listen and do, technical term, obey, his outpouring of grace and his spirit grow us into his new life. The lovely little parable of the farmer planting that we heard earlier the seed grows, he knows not how, in Mark 4, verse 24, reveals the quiet work of the Holy Spirit. He digs and prunes and reveals the weeds, no roundup for him, our nasty sides that show up despite our best efforts to hide them. He deals with them, and it stings, this chopping and digging, and no, in our original state, we're not very pretty. But his process, and it is God's, not ours, goes on relentlessly. He wants us to change, and he wants to change us from one degree of glory to another, growing us into his image. In our old state, we are the eroded ground in front of the library, but watered and tended by his word and his spirit, we grow, old images reset, to show his face to the world. Gardens, like lives, require much care and diligence. They demand willingness, time, discipline, and they give lots of owies along the way. 
God graciously gives us everything we need to grow into him. Just think about it. At St. Aidan's, all the carefully crafted sermons over the years to teach and lead us towards Jesus. The meticulously planned services and music to lead us into real worship. The small groups, coffees and barbecues, and most recently blogs and Zoom to remind us we are not loners. But how well do we really know the master gardener? Are we really a deeply involved part of this garden plot, growing and spreading God's fragrance and grace? Hard questions. The answers are just as hard. Meanwhile, we speak him as we can to those who pass by. Some know the maker of beauty, many don't or won't. But they might notice something different. They might ask questions, be a bit curious. Can we, in our newly changed state, give an account for this newness? If some sneer or slander or slam, we bring these to God again and again if necessary. We might have been there once. We have the gardener's manual to show us who he is in case we get lost or aren't sure of what to do or say. A way of truth to help us know God deeply, love him with all he's given us and others too. He gives us good tools and his strength to do his work. The Holy Spirit to groan with and for us. Grace upon grace from his fullness. Gifts from his spirit to encourage and build up. I don't think she'll mind my telling you this because, because she's glory. But she at first was a real snob, complacent, self-satisfied, ego-centered, vain. She loved the status quo and she hated change. I identify muchly with her. But after the painful digging and weeding and oi changes, she finally realized her new beauty and radiance revealed God's glory and her true selfless self in him. God with us, Emmanuel. He is our maker and we are the plants of his garden. He's the master gardener. He planned the glory corner. We don't have a corner on glory. It's his alone and yet his to be shared. To God be the glory corner and to God be all glory. Amen. Well, thank you, Lynn, so much for sharing today about Glory Corner. Let us all now bow our heads and pray for Lynn. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the vision and the love you've instilled in Lynn's heart for Glory Corner. Thank you for what you've produced through this vision. And thank you so much, Lord, for Lynn's dedication to this vision. We praise you for all that you've done in this. And we praise you for all those you've brought to help Lynn with Glory Corner. Thank you for the encouragement that they are with their teamwork and love for one another and for you. Heavenly Father, we pray that Glory Corner will connect with many people and will bless many. May it be a witness of you, Heavenly Father, and of your church. May it bring many to come to know you, and may it help many in tough times. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for everything you've done. May all the glory go to you. Pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. And now a closing prayer. Dear God, as we move forward, silence all voices within our minds but your own. Help us to seek and be able to follow your will. May our prayers be joined with those of our sisters and brothers in the faith that together we may glorify your name and enjoy your fellowship forever. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us. May all the glory go to God. Amen.